Welcome to another podcast of the current situation of Manchester United. Yes, it's been a while. Your boy has enough video podcast. I've been on the rock for a long bit. But this video is going to be it's not gonna be it's not going to be as long as like forty five minutes. So I want to finish this video close to about twenty five to thirty minutes. But what I want to discuss is whether Rafael Varane has proven to be a top tier signing for Manchester United or he's just he's just a player that flopped at Manchester United. Yes, some persons may say it's early do it's early it's early to come to that assessment that Rafael Varane has not improved or he hasn't been at the race at all at Manchester United. But still there are still echoes that que- that echo this question whether he has been a good signing so far or at least okay let us work with has Rafael Van been a good signing so far so far is me this is my this is what I'll say about it let's go back to last late summer of last year is me when we're linked to Rafael Van so Ramos left from Real Madrid you know he, he was done away with Real Madrid that chapter of his Real Madrid days has been closed and he signed that book and he's put it away in the shelf. Now he wants to start a, ch- a new chapter in his illustrious career, Sergio Ramos. And, and PSG was uh, was one of the clubs that was linked to Sergio Ramos. But how does this affect Rafael Varane in the grand scheme of things? Understand this. Sergio Ramos and Rafael Varane both left at the in the same transfer. It's not like, it's not like one centre back left in the winter transfer season of last year and the other centre back left in, in, in the summer of the, the transfer window of last year. They left in the same window. Maybe it's just me, but that's kind that's kind of a fishy tale to me because how are you going to release your best center back period for the past and last 10, 10 years for the past decade. Rafael Vran and uh, Sergio Ramos have been partners in crime basically at the back. You know, they have been winning trophies. Yeah, that's the period of Sergio Ramos and Rafael Vran. But see, when Sergio Ramos left, I couldn't understand Sergio Ramos leaving because you know my man was getting on a bit. Um, maybe he left that, maybe he felt that he wanted to have a new chapter in his career and go elsewhere. Maybe he fell out with the board, but that wasn't really, we a second. But that wasn't really up in the, give me a second, that wasn't really up in the, in the media, at least not to a large extent. But even so, I can understand Sergio Ramos leaving. But why the hell would Real Madrid let go their last proper world class centre back? What was the motivation behind that? Was it because my man wanted more papers per week? Was it because he wanted to. Uh, <clears throat> man, maybe had some fallen out to the president? Maybe. Fiorentino Perez thinks he's not good enough. Something is there that needs to be solved. Because again, you let go your world class veteran badged centre back in Sergio Ramos. Now you're going to let go another on the way to becoming a veteran bad centre back like Ver- Rafael Veron. Now Rafael Veron is a very decorated centre back. You know, he's no Jonathan Woodgate. <laughs> My man is no. Um, he's no. He's no average centre back. He's won it all. He's won a World Cup. He's won Champions League over Champions League over Champions League. And he's won league titles. And he's won domestic cups as well. So a man of Veran's pedigree of credentials on his C V, I would think that Real Madrid would come with locked horns and hold hold him tightly and not let him go. But again, why do you think Real Madrid let go Rafael Varane? Because, of course, us Man United fans, yes, we wanted a centre-back. But at the same time, when Manchester United went in for Varane and everything was about to be finalised, 
some fans I had I, I like myself were kind of skeptic. They were they were basically like, okay, yes, we're getting a, a world class pedigree centre back at least in name and what he has done. But why is Real Madrid letting him go though? Especially this freely. What is up? Something is fishy, man. This the scent is across is 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 across is across. I'm smelling it. Something is wrong. No, I'll say this. Rafael Vran has been suspect for a bit. If you see how he plays, I support France. If you see how he plays our defense for France, you will see that there are some fa- there's a few moments where he he messes up. He messes up. And again, this is a world class quote unquote world class centre back. So Manchester United came in for him. He sent for Manchester United. Yeah, I was kinda, you know, happy. Especially with the signing, with the defenders that we already have, you know, I think Varane was an upgrade on it. But Varane, he hasn't proved, and he, has, he hasn't fully proven himself. He has been plagued with injuries. We all know this. He hasn't proven to be the 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 great centre back that he that he has been. I'll say this. If you guys watch The Wire, it's a HBO show that premiered starting in 2001 or 2002, straight up to 2008. They had um, pit stops in between, like they stopped for one year and they resumed the other year. But anyway, I w- I'm going to compare the relationship of Rafael Varane and Sergio Ramos with The Wire's actor that is Snoop and Chris Partlow from The Wire, that were the main enforcers of the Stanfield organization. If you guys watch the wire, you know you know where I'm going with this. <laughs> you guys know where I'm going with this if you have watched the wire and you know the relationship of Sergio Ramos and Rafael Varane when they were at their peak at Real Madrid. Watch this now. See, Snoop was like Varane. Snoop was like Varane, this is me. And Chris Partlow was like Sergio Ramos. He was the main enforcer of this Danfield organization. Stoop was a second tier or a sub faction under Chris Partlow. Again, Chris Partlow is the main man for the Stanfield organization in the wire. I would latch him onto Sergio Ramos and Snoop, which is actually a girl, but he does look like a girl. Um I would say Snoop is Sergio is um Rafael Vran. Now, if you notice what happened to Snoop once Chris Partlow went to jail, Snoop didn't survive. I don't even think Snoop survived after one week after after not being in the presence of Chris. Snoop was killed by a protege of theirs. Snoop was killed, yeah, because there was this young youth, not to give spoilers, but I will, named Chris, not Chris, but Michael, and they were hipping him on game on how to become an elite hitman. And that same young youth killed Snoop. That was when Chris was behind bars. So he, he wasn't even out there to protect Snoop. This is me. And just because of the absence and the non-existence of Chris Partlow, that is Sergio Ramos, Snoop was got after one week, not even two months, one week. So it goes to show that Chris Partlow, in the grand scheme of things, was shadowing Snoop. Because Snoop, yes, Snoop is a good killer, but she's not the killer that person thinks she is after she's gotten killed by a young dude that she and Chris has trained. And again, she was killed after one week or less than a week after Chris Partlow was locked up in jail. Now what am I saying? What's the comparison with that and Sergio Ramos and Varane? See, bro, when Vern left the shadows of Serge Ramos, persons are now seeing the real figure, the real character of Ramos. Um, not Ramos. Of Raphael Vran. <clears throat> Raphael Vran is not... No, we all know that he was good, but he's not this big, commanding centre-back that persons thought he was in comparison to when he was playing with Serge Ramos. See, when you're playing with better and mature players, you tend to play better. See, when Pogba was uh, was at Juventus, he played very well in that in that fat, flat five midfield in Juventus with the likes of Marquisio, 
Arturo Vidal, Andrea Pirlo, um, Marquise, I think I said Marquise already. But Pogba was still, was still good. Even when he left the shadows of Vidal, Pirlo, and, 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 and Marquise, my man was, 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 was still doing his thing. Even when he came to Manchester United. But going back to to, to, to Rafael Varane and, and the comparison with Chris Partlow and Snoop. Again, remember Snoop is like Rafael Varane. Snoop getting killed after um after Chris got locked up <coughs> in jail no longer to protect her. Ra Ramos has left Ram uh Real Madrid and persons are now seeing Rafael Varane as an okay centre back. No, I mean, he's not a bad center back. He can make a few tackles, but he's not this commanding. Like, Ramon, Rafael Ron is not an aggressive center back. He's fast. <coughs> Person think he can pass with his feet. He, I, he's tried to do the long-range passing, but he's not really a, a long-range passing center back. <laughs> Persons are thinking that oh Ramos is uh, 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 Ralph, Rafael Varane is going to be the next Real Ferdinand. I mean, in figure maybe, but in terms of the style of play, that's where it differs. That's where it differs. No, he has similarities, but if you want to compare the passing range of Real Ferdinand back in his heyday, and at the same time with Rafael Varane, who is currently a player at Manchester United, it's a mismatch. It's a mismatch. <laughs> it's a mismatch. No, he is. He has had a few string passes, but that's not his main reputation. That's not what he's known for. That's not what he's known for. So with Ramos not presiding under the the uh, <coughs> excuse me, presiding under Rafael Vran, person are seeing their true colors, the true complexion of Rafael Vran right now. Again, my man has been suspect even when Ramos was there, but that's a different discussion. Right now, we're questioning, has Rafael Vran proven to be Manchester United's, um, has, has Rafael Vran proven to be a good sign so far? It's not on me to say as it, because he hasn't played enough games for me to give a proper, <coughs> valid, <coughs> excuse me, assessment. I don't even think he's played at least 20 games in our competition. I don't even think so. He's very injury prone. He's made out of brass glass. Um, he's he makes he makes Eric Bay looks uh, he makes Eric Bay look like a rock man and a rock that can't crack. But these are two centre backs that are injury prone alongside Phil Jones. This is what I will say. <clears throat> the best <coughs> that I have seen Manchester United defend was with Victor Lindelof and Rafael Varane. You cannot have Slobid beside Rafael Varane in the centre-back. That's too much comedy. That's too much comedy. Maguire is getting smoked right now in, in real life, on meetings, on, on social media, by pundits. Rafael Varane should not be playing alongside Harry Maguire. <coughs> Victor Lindelof should be playing alongside uh, Rafael Vran. Victor Lindelof can pass from deep. He's a long-range passer, passing center back. He's slow, but this is where Rafael Vran comes into play. Rafael Vran is, is not slow. He's not pacey, but he ain't slow. So he's going to complement what Victor Lindelof is already lacking. Now, both of them in terms of aggression is lacking. Victor Lindelof, I've seen Victor Lindelof lose ear balls to centre forwards like Ben Teke in the Premier League and they have scored against him and he's getting bullied in the ear. So he's not a dominant figure in the ear. Rafael Vran is not really a dominant figure in the ear. He's tall but he doesn't use that height. He's like one of those, I ain't gonna say soft youths, but you know what them, them type of, you know, them, 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 them looking guys... Well, want to have no bump on him face, and then trying, then, then, then trying to get messed up in the face. Oh, I don't want to, I don't want to, to jump on bust, bust on my head. Again, that's why it's rough for everyone. He's not this animalistic, aggressive, combative centre back like his compatriot Sergio Ramos when he was at um, 
Real Madrid. So even though he's lacking the aggression, um, Rafael Vron, he's still uh, the best complementary centre back to Victor Lindelof at this moment in time. Harry Maguire shouldn't be playing our starting games right now. He's getting smoked. He's getting roasted. He knows he's getting roasted. Ver Maguire knows he's getting roasted. He's getting goosed. He's getting it. He's getting he's getting the heat. He knows that. Oh, hold on. He knows he's getting heat. Uh yeah, he knows he's getting heat, man. But as I finish this video, leave your comments down below in the comments. I want to hear what you guys have to say about uh Rafael Vran because some guys may say I think it's your early days to say Rafael Vran has not been a good sign. How dare you? How dare you? Some persons may say, hmm. I mean, he's done quite well. You know, he's brought back the years of old when he was at Real Madrid with his old defensive partner, Sergio Ramos. But this is not the prime Rafael Varane, is it? Some person may say, mm, I mean, he's, a, he's an upgrade on Manchester United defenders, isn't he? he he's better, hold on. He's better than, than, than Phil Jones by a country mile. He's better than Eric Bay. He's better than... Um, Harry Maguire by a long bit, so I guess he's. Well, I'm, 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 I'm just giving my opinion. I think he's a better upgrade than the defenders we already have. Could be true, but I want to hear what you guys have to say in the comment section. Leave your comments down below, and of course, if you want to leave feedback, leave your comments down below in the comment section. And if you're a muted person, show your appreciation by liking that, um, that that like button. If you dislike the content, dislike as well. Subscribe. So yeah, my verdict is this. This is my claim. Varane has not proven to be the good signing we we have we we have thoughts for. Man, I know that, that I know that sentence is messed up, but we haven't seen the best of Rafael Varane. And again, Rafael Varane is now twenty five year old again. This is not twenty fifteen. He's not twenty. He's not twenty five year again. Rafael Varane, as we know, it is about twenty eight, if not twenty nine. So he's in the prime time years of his career. Now, in the years of a center back, you think of Barres, you think of Mandini. Center backs usually have a longevity in their career. So they can probably hit about 35 or 37 if they're Italian. But if, if I mean, if Van is playing like this, bro, and he's just 28 or 29, God knows what he's going to be playing like if he's 31 or 32. I think he'll be sharing a, 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 a patient's room with Jack Wilshere because he's just he's just brittle bones man he's just brittle bones that's easily bruised up so that is my verdict on uh so again I'm just giving my opinion leave your comments on below leave your opinions below he can improve excuse me he can improve but um I just wanted to do this video because Prisoners are 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 are, are roast in Hamagoya. Yes, rightly so. Not in a derogatory way or insulting way. But I, 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 I said that I said in a video that Hamagoya should be criticized constructively, not destructively. Is me? I believe in constructive criticism. Is me trying to improve Hamagoya? If you guys are trying to insult the man saying he's a a big slobbing and all that. I mean, I've called him slobbing, but not in an insulting, antagonistic, theatrical way. I've said, man, that's slobbing, man. Can't defend a thing. So leave your comments down below. I want to hear what you guys have to say. And I'll show you guys in the next video podcast. Peace.